Yeah, making the new IP is uh, how can I put it? It's just uh, just don't do it. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's insane. I mean, it's a, it's a very difficult process. You have more questions than you have answers, especially when you come from like, uh, you've been making Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2, just kind of like, now like things are going, you just kind of like, uh, like good momentum. And then suddenly that momentum like just drops, stops. It's a very challenging process to create a new IP and you're gonna fail over and over again. But that's what it takes. New IPs are really hard. They're hard because you don't know what's fun yet. You're building new tech, new AI, establishing new characters, new art, all this. You don't get to get that controller in your hand for like six months to a year. You don't know. You don't know what it is yet. I remember like ages ago coming on the project and what are they, what are they in fact going to do? Like what are they going to do? They're going to behave like this. I'm like okay. We're like trying to imagine what's going to happen. Fast forward like four months. They don't do that at all because no. it didn't work, right? It's hard mode, right? Like it's game <laughs> development on, on, hard, on expert. There's a big thing about making a game, right? Which is a game has to be fun. You get your first build where everything's working. You got player mechanics. You can run, walk around the world. You can shoot. You can melee attack people. You've got the AI in there. They're very intelligent, very difficult. And it's totally not fun because they snuck up behind you and murdered you in a second and there was no way to figure out what was going on. We're making a game, by the way. Hey, James. <laughs> Incredible revolutionization of the company has grown quite a bit since, um, since I started. I think I was the twelfth employee or something back uh, when we got started. But we've tried to stay true to those smaller studio roots. I've been here for. 16, going 16 years. There's just no reason to leave. I just I just like the environment here. It's very non-corporate. I think the way we work on Nidog is kind of special because we don't really like hierarchy or bureaucracy and no one is really just just a manager here. Naughty Dog has a very flat structure. Uh, we pretty much all report to the co-presidents uh, and the game directors. I always Tell people when we hire them, just like, my job is going to uh, be able to trust you. And that's what I want. I want just to give you something and just you go with it and I know it's going to get done. We believe in iteration, we believe in collaboration, and we believe in uh, the people making the game working directly with each other. When we have uh, designers and artists, animators all mixed up, anybody that's working on the same tasks, the same characters, the same areas. Jesus Christ, he's got some bright eyes, isn't he? Communicate a lot better. We don't have a lot of meetings because if you need something to get done, you just walk over and you talk and then you go back to your desk and you finish it up. And I really like that. I like when just I just walk in the office and I see just a designers talking with the programmers or programmers uh, over the, uh, the animators and talking to them. I think that's when really the uh, magic uh, happens. Not only dog, we really try to cultivate a culture where anybody can criticize anybody else's work. And we encourage people to um, to be blunt about it and not try to sugarcoat it too much. Um, it takes uh, too long to, to be nice sometimes. <laughs> it is, it's not personal. It's based on more like how can we make a bear game. Well, we want everybody to have a voice. We want to cut out all the bullshit if we can, making sure that people are making decisions not based on ego, but what is going to benefit the game. When you see that people trust your opinion and that they value it, it's like, it's such a great feeling. You, you really feel like you're working as a team on a collaborative effort. We want to uh, sort of remember where we came from and, and you know why we were successful then and, and try to continue that success now. We make games. That's what we like to do. Back when Uncharted 2 wrapped up and we decided that we were going to uh, build the second team and, and create a, a new project, we kicked around a lot of ideas. Um, one of the very earliest ideas was to go back to Jack and Daxter. 
it's really near and dear to us. We really love those characters. You telling in that me universe, the universe? They were making this, thinking about you know, making this shit. Interesting when stories still. On Child Two there. finished. We started to realize that it was not going to do justice to the the franchise that the the fans had fallen in love with. It would be shifting it so far in a new direction that um, we felt that that effort would uh, be more justified in in developing a new IP. Neil and, and Bruce came to Christoph and I and, and said they wanted to do a, a post-apocalyptic game. I think the, the, the core essence of what they wanted to do, though, was to try to tell a story uh, about two people and uh, how their relationship evolved over the course of the entire game. So we nailed that. that. Potential. Oh, wow. There is something very spe special about that game. The so we nailed that bar. Polished. Like, you're not sure if it's going to work or not. And you have doubts. And like, should we be doing a game like that? Should we be doing a first person shooter? Whatever. Like, you, you, you ask yourselves all those questions. And, you know, the creative director and the game director are the, the, the core of the team that have to really see eye to eye. That's why you have that balance between like Bruce and Neil, and Neil's gonna try to push the uh, just the story and the characters, and 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 Bruce's gonna to try to push that with just the gameplay as well. And so it's kind of like they're those guys are just trying always to find to find the right balance be between the two. It's a it's a very uh, delicate process. We feel that the interactive medium has an untapped potential to touch the feelings of, of, of the player. You have that connectivity, the fact that I'm actually in the world and participating in what's happening on the screen in front of me. It gives us some sort of advantage to make you feel connected with what's actually happening. At Naughty Dog, that's what we're trying to do, is pair story and gameplay together. If we can make you feel like you're actually with these characters on that journey, and you're invested in those stories and those characters, then you're feeling, the, in theory, the same thing that they're feeling. As the story evolved and took different shapes and different forms, the thing that was always there was Joel and Ellie. And because of that, everything kind of uh, grew out of that relationship. We've seen kind of that role of the anti-hero change, especially over the last three to five years, to where before it was like you know, the thick neck mercenary kind of guy. For this game specifically, for this story, we needed something new. The reason we didn't want to make Ellie Joel's daughter from the get-go is because it wouldn't have anywhere to go. Of course, at that point, he'd be willing to do anything for his daughter because that is what a dad would do for his daughter. They didn't even know each other at the beginning of the story. Then we start from scratch, and it's almost like the player has the same relationship to Ellie as Joel does. And we could take our time to build that relationship between these characters, and if we do it right, then the player will be feeling that same growth that Joel does, and we're kind of mirroring that, that emotional relationship between the two. <clears throat> what are you doing? Killing time. Well, what am I supposed to do? I am sure you will figure that out. God, look at original. Your watch is broken. It's exciting that Neil wrote something like this, where he's like, I don't want to make the stereotypical characters. I want to make real people in this crazy situation and these forced to make decisions that are really tough. Like, what would we be like in those situations? I mean, we weren't consciously trying to pick male or female for characters. You just try to pick characters and just be honest with who they are. It almost doesn't matter, right? Joel's daughter could have been Joel's son. Ellie could have been a boy, and Joel might have been Tess. You could have swapped those roles, and I think the story would have still worked. The focus on female strength, it's so unique. You get to see what's so powerful about a woman through all of these female characters, which makes this game wonderful and unique. There's a crew of fireflies that'll meet you at the Capitol building. That's not exactly close. You're capable. You hand her off, come back, the weapons are yours. Double what Robert sold me. Speaking of which, where are they? Back in our camp. We're not smuggling shit until I see them. I want Joel to watch over her. Whoa, whoa, I don't oh, think shit, that's the I'm best not him. How do you know them? 
I do think having a strong female character, especially like Ellie, is so rare in video games. And as a gamer, and more specifically a female gamer, it's frustrating to me because I'll, I'll see sort of the, the stereotypical female character where she's amazingly beautiful and huge boobs and she's there to be either the love interest or just because they're like, well, we need to throw a chick in here. We've seen the strong woman or we've seen the weak woman. We haven't necessarily seen the empowered woman from this kind of standpoint. And there's a, that beautiful scene where Joel finds her inside the house and she's reading through this girl's journal going, is this really what they used to worry about? What, what shirt do I wear and what boy am I gonna go out with? You know, and to be met with those first world problems that we deal with every day and go, how trivial is all of this? I think it's gonna resonate a lot, not just with you know, a female audience, but with a male audience as well. The thing that was intriguing to me after the fact is knowing good. that yeah. we're kind of creating a female action hero in a way, and this is her origin story with Ellie. To sort of be such a strong female character that is completely normal looking, regular t-shirt and jeans, and she's 14 and she is still a total badass, is really exciting to be a part of that. There's so few non-sexualized women in video games, <coughs> uh, especially in the main role, that we were kind of proud that we were creating one. It's very complex, and without the players knowing it, she becomes the protagonist by the end of the story. And that's why she's in the front of the box, and that's why we've been promoting the two of them together so much. Who's there? It is a dual protagonist game, and um, yeah, I guess I, I get nervous to think about it in that way. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Crazy about the original art. Uh, we couldn't talk about it. In fact, in interviews, we've been lying about the it. The FPS, I can remember it, run out. PS3. It's so important for that to be a surprise. Sorry, journalists. Here we go. Sorry. Still looks great. Hold on. That's it. Yo! How the we doing, the game was set pretty Finished early it, mate. On finished it. We knew uh, that we wanted to make a really grounded story. We knew the, that um, we wanted just to make the DLC. I've just unlocked the making of the last episode. So I'm watching it, mate. It's good. go through the same emotional roller coaster that Joel and Ellie were going through. One of the things we kind of struggled with is to say, well, if we want to really ground this world and make it so like realistic maybe we shouldn't have any oh, sound dude. as a monster maybe like by just having an infection that just killed people it's all about <laughs> the dlc were really uh, lot shorter than what i remember society and how different people decided finished to main to game last people. friday <laughs> and what we realize is because we're making an action game a lot of the storytelling happens on the joystick and once we remove the infected it's like all of a sudden now we can't tell the story through gameplay of what happened to the world. Uh, and that's where we kind of went back and kind of brought the infected back in because it lets you see once you're fighting them the threat that people have to deal with. What's Otherwise, best then? Just what be the. Um, and people could talk about it, but you how do you mean? Oh, oh, the next then. Um, Last of Us 2, mate. For us, in a specifically an action game. Uh, if I don't start it tomorrow, it'll be Thursday. We're start kicking around those ideas and we're just like, what would be cool just to play? The early inception for it really came from a BBC video we saw called Planet Earth where they were talking about a cordyceps fungus. This cordyceps fungus gets inside of the brain and controls these ants and mandibles start chomping, they grow up to higher areas, cordyceps fungus sprouts out and then it germinates. And essentially uh, uses them to spread the, its infection and take over whole colonies, sometimes wiping them out. As soon as we saw it, we were intrigued by the idea of what if it jumped to humans? So what would happen? How would people react? What would happen to society? Yeah, no worries, dude. As we're trying to develop the look, I can't believe how good the original looked on we went PS3. So looking at some of the, because this is obviously way back when. Really alien and I've unlocked human, all the concept art, um, all the cheats, unlocked everything. Like zombies, uh, and we couldn't find so I could speed like an original it if I wanted to. place for them. But one of our artists uh, just did this kind of photo mashup where he took a bunch of images of diseases or images of fungal overgrowth, uh, and he kind of mashed it all together and he threw it on this person. It was a very iterative process, making sure that the fungus felt properly integrated, like it was part of the body, growing out of the body. And not just 
fungus growing in the head, but it's tearing the face apart. Hey, I have unlocked all concept art. I was just looking through some of the some of the, this some and it's in great um, agony bits of artwork, mate, which just looks absolutely phenomenal. Got some human cognitive abilities or the thought process back here. This isn't some decaying corpse on the ground. This is a living thing that's going to be coming after you in the world. The fungus is always the focal point. So you can see from a distance, oh, this guy's infected. I can tell straight away. And fungus they have these beautiful saturated colors. And we really like that conscious of this something so horrific that it's gonna like stop at nothing i just like um uh, when i was looking through it earlier i was yeah. like elements of it are some beautiful. of the uh, the skill gore. and talent about what they've got about being what worked for them it's no wonder they make games like this mate when you see some of concept art it is absolutely it different level evident that we were onto something that was quite a bit different and something look that at these models really that one before, you know what this is before they go into a game very disturbing and it seems so creepy and so unique. Detail, mate. Right away, Detail. we gravitated towards it, and it's like, this is our base infected. Everything should kind of come out of this look. Clicker. So once we had this idea of the face splitting kind of look, that eventually became what we called the clicker stage. We went to great lengths to create a full biological cycle for these things. So in the early stages, you don't actually see too many signs of uh, the fungus surfacing out of the skin. It's kind of underneath it, like people have lumps starting to show. The eyes will be kind of cloudy um, or lopsided because the fungus kind of originates inside the head. That moves into the next phase, which is the clicking phase. And if they mess with the eyes, we end up saying, oh, how do they get around? Oh, echolocation. And they use a form of echolocation to track down their enemies, uh, just like bats. Or even some blind people can see by making a clicking Fuck, it's sound. So clever. A sound that so on its clever. own wouldn't be very scary. And then to associate it with something that people in this world are very fearful of. So that as you're exploring an environment, all of a sudden you hear this click and you're seeing everybody just get frightened, just everybody duck, everybody hushes. Big boy. The bloater is the most severe of the stages. So large pieces of the body has been replaced by these kind of fungal plates. The, the fungus completely takes over the body and blooms. They're kind of covered in things that have been growing on them. Things like moss and like little life on life kind of. Ah. What the fuck is that? Oh, when infected feels like it's going to die, it finds like a dark corner and it becomes part of the environment. The human elements aren't there anymore. And then the body is gone. They lay down and sprout and then spew spores. And if people can breathe those spores, they become infected as well. It all had to kind of make sense of how each stage flowed from one to the other. And that's hopefully how we've created a world that you can kind of look through it and understand the science behind it. When you listen to talk in this about what they were trying to do in that, they've absolutely nailed it. 